welcome everyone. This is No Bullshit Gaming Podcast Two and a Half Gamer Session Number Forty One. We are sharing actionable insights, dropping knowledge from our day-to-day -day UA game design and admin jobs, but also discussing the latest industry news from time to time. Having so much gone. fun, but let's not forget this is a four AM conference discussion vibe. So let's not take it too seriously, and. This is also uh, not 4 a.m. this time, but a vacation discussion vibe, <laughs> as you can see. And if you don't see it on the Spotify, oh, well, you can see it actually on the Spotify. Nevertheless, welcome, everybody. And welcome. Uh, we have Felix Braberg over here, Jakub Remiar over here, and then myself, Matja Lancerić, as well. Over there. I was every <laughs> Over there. Yeah, over there. <laughs> Over there with the, the fake background. Is it fake though? Yeah, much is, much is sitting, is sitting in his kitchen in Slovakia right now with his shirt off. Of course. Fake yeah, yeah, exactly. Of course. Uh, you, can, you can actually fact check this uh, because I, <laughs> I recorded the Marvel Snap episode with uh, Deconstruct of Fun. So, uh, well, or maybe I did it as, uh, there as well. Nobody will ever know. Yeah, it, <laughs> it was a pretty, ever know. pretty nice one over and listen to it. Like good, good stuff. I was it was super long though. Yeah, so, yeah, it uh, was like but one and a half. Because you know what, half, product stuff, product stuff takes time. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know exactly because we we discussed this after the pod. Like, okay, so it was one and a half hours, and I said to guys like, hey guys, so I didn't want to interrupt you because it was super interesting. It was really interesting, like you talking about all the like the product stuff and the game design, and I had zero idea what they're talking about, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so great. I learned a lot. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. learned a lot, and it, it and was got, nice got when you time. were asking, like, "What's drafting?" Yeah. <laughs> that, that was nice. Of course, of course, man. <laughs> well, if I don't know something, I yeah, will ask. of course, like, that's what we do. No worries. That's what we do. Yeah, and what we do today is uh, well, except everything else, we also want to like celebrate you becoming a dad, obviously, because well, it was a time when. <laughs> Sometime that we <laughs> we didn't didn't talk to each other. Because last week there was an episode that uh, the Felix was uh, recording with uh, with Ra Raphael, right? Uh, yeah, from, Raphael uh, Vivas, from, yeah. yeah, from Ra Raphael from Uplavin, and then well, we're here. So it's it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. People get kids in Congrats, the meantime. Jacob. So much time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, people get having kids. Me. Uh, moving my ass to Maldives. Uh, Felix, what's up with you? With you? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's been a... What's this thing they say in America? It's been a humdinger of a week and everything was just getting ready for Thanksgiving, Black Friday, and now it's starting all over again for Christmas. <sighs> man. I was asking about your personal life. I don't give a fuck about like ECPMs or all this like Thanksgiving bullshit. <laughs> Come on. Well, yeah. Okay. So, what are we talking about today? Is it going to be an Admon Q4 update from Felix, obviously? Then we're going to talk about some some interesting stuff about uh, the new game which launched, which name is Goddess of Victory. Uh, and then, then what else? Jakub is going to talk about well. Obviously, about the game as well, <laughs> from the game design point product of view. Product stuff as usual. <laughs> product stuff as usual. Okay, product stuff as usual. All right, Felix, what's up? Oh, you, oh, you have man. some. Yeah, man, you have some some predictions to make. Oh, I got well. predictions. I got things, but man, so last Wednesday before going into Black Friday and Thanksgiving weekend, like, phew, I was a bit nervous, right? So, consumer price index in America—that's like inflation is 7.7%. And that's a 40 year high right now. And I thought we were heading in for like a super weak Thanksgiving and Black Friday. Yeah, but it's going but down man, already, isn't it? Like they had eight yeah, already. Man, oh man, was I wrong? <laughs> 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 like this year, after like eating Thanksgiving pie, uh, US consumers spend $9.12 billion on Black Fridays. That represents a modest but increase of 2.3% uh, compared to last year. Still an increase, a uh, modest one, but it's a very pleasant surprise. So, where's the crisis? Are you yawning, Jakob? Are you yawning? Yeah, I'm yawning a little bit because where's the crisis? Like, yeah, he is. 
people are spending like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> we'll get there later, man. <laughs> Of course, he's it's it's he's yawning. It's like eleven eleven a.m. in uh, well in Bratislava and Berlin. It's like yeah, it's exactly. like midnight midnight for him. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, <laughs> listeners right now might be thinking, "Wait, this is a gaming podcast. Why is Admon Boy Felix talking about consumer spending and economics?" That's because it's all related to ad earnings in mobile gaming. If we look a bit deeper on the numbers, uh, the big winner of the Black Friday spend bump was mobile e-commerce. Mobile e-commerce on Thanksgiving oh, no. accounted for 55% of US online retail sales. That's up nearly 10% compared to last year. And Black Friday reached 48% of online sales uh, compared to 44%. So consumers now are spending more money than ever on e-commerce. Like they prefer to spend it on mobile instead of desktop. So good, good, good. So now, this is where it starts to affect our gaming sphere on mobile. So marketers and UA managers are clever. They know this. So they increase uh, their sales uh, on mobile to like ramp up spending on branding and UA for apps. So the lion's share of all in-app impressions come from gaming. So what does the US consumer love to do after eating Thanksgiving turkey? They play mobile games. So... In order to show their ads to people, they increase their spending while normal game ads are still running. So this pushes up eCPMs, very basic, right? But that means us publishers earn a boatload more money and if everything's set up properly, right? So how much? So using a baseline uh, for the week before Thanksgiving, I looked at my sample set of 19 million impressions, which were mostly video and US-based. I saw increases in eCPMs in different games, and the increases were always between 3% to 25.40% increases. Pretty big so, spread. <laughs> yeah, very big spread. The yeah, delta is like massive. 3.14 to 25.4. I mean, those numbers, Philly, you always pull. I was like, man, it's amazing. It's just, I'm just looking it's at the so, Excel so sheets that I've done. It's not like it's not free from free to twenty five. It's from free to point fourteen to twenty five point four. We are super super concrete, very exact. I love it. <laughs> yes, right. Our listeners come here for concrete facts, not yeah, wishy washy yeah. predictions, right? One hundred percent, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Yeah, where you, All where right. you pull out numbers from Felix as it produces decimals. That's just how it is. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, okay, fine. So back to some context here. Like an increase of 3% in the US ECPMs should not be considered like a big like, wait, 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 on the admin side. What? You had 3.15% in the, in the yeah, notes. It's so 3.15, why, why? yeah. Yeah, so why I changed the prediction. I changed the predictions now to like accommodate for <laughs> your guys is giving me shit and now I'm getting <laughs> shit for changing it. <laughs> Did the last book. <laughs> oh, I just... I missed I missed Man. Maciej when he was in Slovakia. <laughs> <laughs> Maldives Maciej. Maldives Maciej is more difficult. Oh, yeah, All right. It's more mean, mean. So, of course. 3.15% <laughs> increases <laughs> in US ECPMs should not be now considered like a very big sense. win. I like sense. on the advanced side. Mm. So, <laughs> so what's up with the big delta in these increases? So it all comes down pretty much to the networks that you're using and how they interact with each other and what mediation you're on. So if you dive deeper into the data, uh, the admon trends that I see, and by the way, I'm going to name some network names here, and I'm already dreading this because I know I'm going to get goddamn emails from these networks complaining and trying to disprove this with some kind of data. Look, these are what what I've seen, and these are the conclusions I've made from my data set. Don't complain. So out of all the games, the biggest games in eCPM I saw were always on max mediation, Gains here were between 6% to 25%, and the mean increase value was 12% increase on eCPMs. So the 25% eCPM cre increase, which was the biggest increase I saw, was on max. And it was driven by a combination of these networks. It was AdMob, uh, AppLevin Bidden, AppLevin Exchange, Digital Turbine, Amazon Publisher Service, and, and Mobi Bidding. And, but really what happened here, it was really clear that AdMob 
had the biggest spike on demand, like out of any other network. And basically, the companies that were in the best situation were like uh, gaming companies that had networks that could force AdMob to increase their eCPM to maintain like kind of their share of revenue. So that was like the key yeah, driver. So results on AdMob mediation were a bit more meager. Uh, according to my sample set. The issue here generally is that on ad mob mediation, the ad mob bidder always takes up at least 50 to 95% of the share of revenue in mobile games. And despite what other networks you kind of add. So what happens if you're on ad mob mediation is there's no other networks really to force price up in a meaningful way. So results on ad mob mediation uh, was that ECPMs increased by somewhere between 6 to 9%. So iron source mediation here was uh, pretty much uh, like the smallest part of my sample set, like sample size. So it was quite small, but the sample size showed like a very modest increase of three to 9% on ECPMs. And I'm not sure if this was like overall because yeah, I don't have that many impressions to look at, but the key networks also that the games I had on here, like missed a lot of the networks that drove a lot of value on max. So uh, we know that Black Friday and Thanksgiving weekend is just a tiny like pre-snack for what's to come, and that's Christmas. So looking at the data from last weekend, uh, my top ad monetization tips for Christmas is you need to add networks that force uh, and compete with AdMob to increase their eCPMs because that's where the majority of the demand is going to come from. Uh, and a lot of e-commerce and branding spend seems to have been driven by only a couple of networks. And in particular, these networks that you need now for Christmas is AppLovin, Amazon Publisher Services, Digital Turbine, and InMobi Bidding. And these networks compared like together force AdMob to push up the prices, which drives a lot of value for you as a publisher. Oh, wait, wait, wait a second. So, you need to add networks that compete and force AdMob to... Bub. So which ones, or how do I know? I just said it. So, so just say it. Add these. <laughs> That's what I did. But that, that, that's what he did. Okay. Like, that's well, exactly uh, what I did. Still sleeping? Oh, he said Maybe. you need to add Apple plugin, Amazon, DTX, in yeah. Okay, it's okay. Like, like what are you still sleeping? Come on, bit. man. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. So now I also have to make a little prediction here. And just like Maciej's background, I do see some storm clouds on the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> so I think right. ECPMs in Q1 are in for a hell of a goddamn hangover. And why do I think this? So wow. if we dig a no big way. deeper on the Black Friday, yeah, but Black Friday numbers, like a lot of these purchases that were made were made using buy now, pay later companies, which saw their revenue increase by 72% in the holiday weekend. So buy now, pay later is of course, when you finance your purchases over time and you pay interest, which means that now as rates are increasing, <laughs> these goods will be more expensive and cause consumers to have way less money to spend. So get ready for a lean, lean, lean admon Q1. Okay, but then... Uh... What should you do in Q1 to get like higher ECPMs and all, all this, all this bullshit? Yeah, there's a couple Ready. of things you can do. Funny thing uh, you're asking. I'm actually working on a blog post that's coming out oh, no. this week, oh, really? going covering nice. exactly that. And I'll post that nice. later and we can talk about that in the next session because I know you guys want to talk about your new waifu game. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Okay, so instead of a tip, we got the trailer for next time. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> okay, now I, I didn't, I didn't understand. Like, so you're not going to talk about it, but we need to wait for the for the blog post. See, oh my I'm god, this is sleeping. You're sleeping. <laughs> what the fuck? This is even worse. This is even worse than me shilling my own own blogs and and articles. Ah, oh. ah. Oh. Okay, whatever. Anyway, most Man, stuff for okay. waifu. So let's, let's talk about the some some ua uh interesting stuff and uh and the, the waifu game obviously well so i started playing this goddess of victory nikkei's nikkei or nikki or well, well whatever uh game because it was it was trending so so uh so heavily in the charts and uh well 
I need some like uh, help here, Yaku, because I downloaded the game, mm-hmm. started playing, started playing, and immediately after ten minutes, I turned it off and uninstalled. Mm-hmm. Like, what the fuck is this game all about? Is it only like any anime female characters like? trying to battling the the robots or like like is there anything else actually happening in the game what do you want more you have anime characters battling robots <laughs> and all of them are <laughs> waifus <laughs> okay and all of them have yeah weapons okay <laughs> yeah okay so they have weapons okay so why I, I, all right then why why this game like why the fuck is it it's, it's earning like so much money. So it made almost like 80 million. Not almost, 83, USD. man. 83, 80, and, okay. and well, only by I, the estimate lo- that we see, and we don't see the Chinese yeah. part. You don't just change the part. Okay, well, I was looking at this like a few days ago, so maybe, yeah, okay, now it's like made more, more than 80 million since launch, which happened on November 3rd. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So no, it's November, making around like... November 2nd, I think, was the official number or something. Okay. But I checked it yeah. for first month from 2nd November to 2nd December. Yeah. It's like 83 plus, which means it's on its Ugh. way to do 1 billion in first 12 months. Because for that, you need 83 wow. mil. Okay. Wow. Oof. So it's making like anything between 2 to 5 millions a day. I mean, that's fucking crazy. <laughs> But we need to mention that it's like top one geo is Japan, obviously. Then is South Korea and the US, surprisingly, sitting on the third place. For like this type of game, I wouldn't expect the US be on the third place. Actually, but... it's pretty common. <laughs> I will really? have a comparison Actually. with another waifu game, a favorite of mine. <laughs> ah, of course. All right. Okay. But first, like, how is this even possible, Jakub? You are the, the waifu. Waifu guy here. Uh, Japan. Uh, that's why it's possible. Okay. And then uh, the rest okay. of uh, Asia. And then the okay. increasing and bigger and bigger crowd in the US that's pretty much uh, consuming this game. And it's uh, like, you know, people are getting the appeal there more and more. So that's why, as I said, it's not that uncommon. And even Azure Lane had pretty much a kind of the same mix of uh, countries okay. regarding the revenue. So my guess is like I I told this like three years ago already like waifu games are here to stay and they will port to the west, so they will migrate so here why, and stay yeah. here as a like stable category yeah. and whoever says otherwise just you know you don't just stop it yeah, yeah stop it <laughs> yeah you because don't it know. will work yeah. it will work and like you know just look at what happened with Edge Runners the cyberpunk anime that Netflix did for yeah. CD Projekt Red like <laughs> people in the West eat it alive and the sk- sales of sky- uh, cyberpunk game which was like two years old on the store skyrocketed so yeah anime Man, also I, I start... is starting to work also in the West and will work I started I started, it, wa- I started watching clad it. anime like is it the scantily clad anime characters that are driving this or is it actually like the gameplay that's a lot of fun A gameplay is actually very very good like uh I'll go into detail but yeah what, what, what game what gameplay are you talking about it's just like anime characters with boobs uh, and ass which is just sh- shaking all the time and battling robots and like sh- shooting guns Hell, Mr. Okay but okay well yeah, okay <laughs> Okay, we can we can we can go leave deeper it, in, it, into it. that. Okay, I will leave it to 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 the to your your part after a while. Uh, okay, but, but thanks. Okay, it's good to know. Uh, but I guess this is like why uh, small giant games is also pushing their new games in soft launch, which is almost which is almost everything but waifus. <laughs> <laughs> so they will they will fail. <laughs> they will they fail. Will okay. Fail. Yeah, they, or they were gonna add it. Okay. Never, nevertheless, so I started looking into the like the the UMX of the of the game and uh, and the channels out there, and, and it's mainly Unity and Google, which is uh, it's not that interesting. The most interesting part and the sad part at the same time is the creative strategy, and I mean the whole game feels still like super sexist, uh, and it's like they're not using anything else in their gameplay or the, the creatives just gameplay, which is again as I said, boobs, ass, and that's it. So you see the ads from 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 everywhere you go. But it's in, in not the fake. menu, this is not fake. It looks not exactly fake. like okay. it looks in the game. Exactly. Yes, it's yes. Of course, it's not fake. You only see giant boobs and guns, and that's it. So like they they have the in the creative uh, like the, the big headline like "Will you watch my back, Commander?" I mean seriously. <laughs> that's a nice pun. <laughs> like, 
I was like, fuck, <laughs> I was like, this, this is terrible. Like, hey, Tencent, is this really the creative strategy you are going for? I mean, on, on one hand, I totally get it. Like, where is this coming from? If the target audience is men 40 plus, and especially in the East, I guess this is work. This is like how, it, how it's working there. Is it, Jakub, or I'm completely wrong? To be honest, I directly look up the demographics or like several waifu yeah. games and couldn't load them. Yeah. Don't know what's happening, like okay. spe- specifically so we, for Japan. But my guess okay. is that it's pretty much a culture thing there that, you know, it's anime. Okay. And anime works a little right. bit different yeah. where, where you just, you know, go stroll casually into Akihabara, Tokyo, the anime quarter, and you'll understand. Okay. Well, to be just completely honest, I find this very wrong. <laughs> I know, like, maybe I'm just, like, too Western. But this is not, like, the first uh, case of uh, sexist ads uh, that we are seeing. And not only sexist, but also, like, creative attacking women. And, like, there's a misogyny in those creatives and, like, also, like, violence against women. And we are seeing this more and more in the last uh, last few days and weeks, which is not ideal, I think. But that's and, not, uh, they're not anime all of these like, they're not anime yeah, yeah that's, that's what anime. one big difference like these guys were here first and then this kind of fake ad whatever and now violence against women was you know it's coming from the west actually not from the east that needs to be said yeah all i know is i have to have removed so much of these like ads because of so many complaints and like yeah it's really annoying because like yeah like they're showing these ads like pretty much in all apps and it's just super annoying you have to be super quick to remove them otherwise you get so many complaints and then of your course. user rating drops yeah. and and we are this like like i said like we are this seeing seeing this more and more and mostly like female game female oriented games these is like match free or match or, or merge games i mean seriously <laughs> and right now i think uh there was one um uh, one example that uh Claire and Janie uh mentioned on on LinkedIn which is like play flock and there's also like Kids of War, and I think Kids of War is again like uh, Staple from there. East, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's 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 different. But I mean, like, why is this why is this even happening? I'm uh, I'm a little bit constrained here. Is like how we ended up here. So I think like unfortunate starter of this creative creative uh, concepts is actually tactile games because Lily's Garden started these like mm. creative concepts with like rocking the whole UA creative world with the new take like drama, pregnancy, storytelling with a twist and all these like I think they didn't very much expect this new level of drama will emerge from this because of this like how could you expect this but I know like these creatives it, they are uh, running because they catches your attention they, they catch your attention obviously and most probably they deliver a lot of like roi uh because well they're still running so i guess uh they're bringing money uh, into the like company's pockets but this is really all about like the money and it, i know i've been talking about like uh how gaming industry is like all about the business and and, uh, and needing a paying your bills but I think uh, there should be a point where we, as an industry, just draw a line uh, because money is obviously important, but should it be important, more, more important than everything else? I mean, I'm pretty sure that you can find the ways how to produce creatives in an ethical way that, don't show, that, yeah. that you know, to drive positive ROI. And, you know, just recently, just an example, I started working with one company on the creative front, which is... They wanted to just move or evolve their creative strategy from fake ads to start using some real um, gameplay connected creatives. And it, take, it took a little bit of a time to actually evolve from something like super fake to more friendly creatives to their brand that delivers uh, ROI. And it actually, we succeeded to, to do that. So I'm pretty sure that you can actually succeed moving from these sexist ads and uh, and start working on something else. And also, you should just stop it right now. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Fake ads are one thing. They are fake, they're misleading, but at least they're not attacking women and like it's, it's not misogyny all the time. So, hey guys, if you want, I will be doing free creative work for you for a year if you stop doing it right away. So, tell like just ping me, Wherever 
on LinkedIn here in the, on my email, just stop it right here. It's terrible. So please. Uh, the, the, uh, okay. The, well, the question is, where, where, where was I? The question <laughs> you is know, like, again, like yeah. what thing will break the camel's back here? Because yeah, what like we'll be talking about this like yeah. for years and like you know, I know. N- n- nobody cares that much where you know butlers are getting drowned into lava or whatever the pink create is yeah. where. Yeah, of course. Now like because the rules are that there are no rules that you can do whatever you want to show in the creatives. It means that like at some point we'll hit the lowest denominator where somebody pays attention, yeah, I know. I know. but yeah, what yeah, happens yeah. afterwards, because I still don't, uh, or let's say can't imagine the, the process of enforcing anything upon this. Yeah. No, of course it's, 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 it won't be enforced because well, Facebook and all the, all the, well, you channels, they're making money out of this. So they they don't give a fuck, but you know, like we as an industry, we can just uh, say like, hey guys, well, we care about like how our company brand looks like, and and uh, we can commit to some like ethical ways how to do creatives, and obviously, you know, I ter- I really care about like ROI and everything, but this is just just out of the out of the question. It's terrible. Yeah, it's definitely like so. It's like it's, it's pretty much getting to the like, lowest denominator. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. My guess is next up will be even worse if nobody happens here. So, so. no, no, it's, it's a race yeah. to the bottom. It's going to get yeah. worse and worse, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. Like it has been in the last couple of years. Like it's not going to get better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's like we at least what we can do is just talk about and uh, talk about that and try to stay away from it and then and, uh, and yeah, well, that's it, I guess. <laughs> but it's. It's really like unfortunate, like how we went from like the the storytelling narrative, Lily's Garden pregnancy uh, creatives, and we ended up here with, like creatives that suggest rape and like attacking attacking women. I was like, come on, <laughs> like what the fuck happened to <laughs> to the companies? That's that's just that's just wrong on so many levels. Yeah, it would be great if there would be yeah. some kind of functional enforcement here that, let's say, even normal yeah. guys wouldn't need to kind of care about. I think that's where we're heading towards. That's where it's going to end up. Yeah. Well, all right. Yeah. Let's yeah. let's move to to rent some over. something rent more. Over. Yeah, yeah. Rent, rent over. over. Rent yeah. over. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. So you can move to your, your wife, wife explanation of like why why the fuck is this actually working? Because I'm I'm super interested in hearing that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna do a, like say a little, little bigger roundabout here about like what's like. The no, thing. no, yes. come on, just <laughs> don't, don't do like a, like super, super, super long, <laughs> super long, boring. Another coffee. Oh, no worries. Uh, it'll be it'll well, be swift. Just, but, but okay, you need to understand some I can, concepts you know, like, that can... that's, that still you don't understand because of Mr. Surface Play Ten Minutes Uninstalled guy. So let, let's correct that and don't be bullshit. Ooh, wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah, wow. Maciej, okay, shut up. You only play the game for ten minutes. You need, well, like I, you need well, to end your something, I want to play man. the game more. I, I want to play the game more when I find it really offensive. Like, come on. Like, why would it's I? It's not that offensive. That's it's just like you don't understand the mechanics, man. That that's the thing. They have like okay, very okay. very standard feature set, especially influenced, I would say, by stuff like AFK Arena these days. Sure, but can I can I hate the game because it uh, because I hate how it looks like? I can. Of course, you can hate the game, but you there need you to go. play it if you want to talk about it. That's very easy. <laughs> I know. Okay, <laughs> I know. I know. Okay, I know how it is. L- that's why continue. we. That's why we. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's why we discussed this um, on like a thirty-nine yeah, so, of se- session. So, of what are we talking about? We're talking about the latest uh, sci-fi RPG, actually. Which, by the way, sci-fi. It's sci-fi. it's sci-fi, Ooh. the worst of the worst teams to get, and it's making so much money. So just saying, it, it looks like something between like a cyberpunkish end of the world mecha post apo. Like you throw there every niche of the niche and the Venn diagram just gets super small and it still makes so much money. So great job there. Uh, it's set in this post-apocalyptic future where the surface of Earth was conquered by unknown mechanical creatures. Uh, of course, it's always better to slay something not living in mass quantities because you don't feel remorse for it. So great point there. And the story follows the commander and his Nikes. And Nike in this case is pretty much a synonym for like a battle robot. So all the waifus and girls are pretty much bots. And then uh, those are artificially made by three big corps 
and you are even talking with the CEOs of these corporations in the game, which are also all, all girls, of course. And they are very, very mean and arrogant. And uh, you use those robots to pretty much reclaim Earth and have like a nice progress uh, P- scripted PV campaign. So that, that's what they have there. Uh, it was developed by South Korean-based uh, company Shift Up, and it's working with the publisher Level Infinite, which is a division of Tencent, as we know. Uh, that was set up in 2021 in Singapore, if I understand, with the uh, goal of going more into international. So I guess that means out of China, <laughs> because this is definitely working out of China, especially Japan. Um, the development, and this is interesting, began already in 2018 with an internal planning competition for a prototype of the game. And it was originally planned to be a first-person perspective shooter. So imagine that. Uh, but it was like a change to incorporate the battle poses inspired by the... Hell of a pivot. <laughs> yeah. A nice by, by the Gears of War series, of course. Like, if you don't know, Gears of War is the one, uh, like, sig- signature cover shooter. Cover shooter means that you have an obstacle, you're leaning your back on it, and at some point you, like, you know, go pick up some enemies, reload, go back to the cover, and so on and so forth. Uh, if, if I understand the game there works in corridors, so this one just works on permanent cover. So the covers pretty much they're not moving anywhere. It's like a shooting rage pretty much. Uh, Shift Up first revealed Nike along Project Eve and Crank in showcase event in 2019. So actually this was very, very anticipated. And even if I look into the like community and everything, like in, they already have like 150k discord 200k twitter and everything it just pretty much missed us because you know we are not that uh, super deep into the japanese gaming market but it was showcased in like g-star uh, the big uh, biggest south korean gaming conference tokyo game show the japanese one and then initially was planned for 2020 release but then was rescheduled i guess because of covid problems and usual delays because the production value of this game is enormous so my guess is the team and everything working on this is like super big and yeah and, and i get to it why it works so well because it's just that <laughs> just the pre-registrations were three million <laughs> so, <laughs> so so just that tells you something and that's that's nothing compared to like uh some some like 30 or 60 million for like call of duty of course yeah, i think even crack i think even crash bandicoot had more of than course but keep in mind that three million pre-registration from japan means five times the ltv of an american so now count yeah that, that yeah, yeah that's what i wanted to <laughs> say like the game yeah, the game has good. like five million downloads and 80 83 million revenues like yeah that's one of those okay. japanese arpu games where it skyrockets very high well, how, how, like, where does it sit, uh, like, between the, the Dragon Quest or Walk Quest ah, or whatever one. is the game you're talking about? Um, I guess it will, be, it will be lower uh, because Dragon Quest no. is only in Japan and that's like pure, okay. pure Japanese uh, ARPU. Pure Japanese, and this okay. one is kind of trying to be more international. So people with okay. less money to throw around on mobile games is dragging it down, probably. So let's see. Um, I'll try to compare the games to Azure Line. Uh, because let's just say that waifu games are very, very popular in Japan specifically. Uh, They're very appealing to otaku culture. Uh, Otaku culture is pretty much the whole anime manga culture there. Uh, I guess in the West, you would call these people nerds. In in Japan, you call these otakus. Uh, They have like different things pretty much uh, that are not in common because some people are just, you know, watch anime take uh, taking figurines and stuff and you know have a different things in in the west you have like comics games and everything in there it's kind of a little bit different i would say because the the whole anime manga thing it creates like a different setup than nerds in in the in the west there are pretty much everything that people don't understand from the main culture i would say in in the east it's it's a little bit different but anyway there's like a very very big tradition wait, 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 wait. On... So, so that you say like give me your lunch money Oktaku? <laughs> no, i don't know man it, it's like it's there's it's mainstream there it's like it's not not how it is in the west uh i, I by the way i recommend anyone going there into Japan, into Tokyo, just go there into Akihabara and you will understand that's the anime neighborhood there. 
It's like the, one of I the best places in the earth. So cool. Yeah, it's so it's, cool. It's great. Uh, yeah, so Azure Lane was actually, again, a similar waifu game uh, where you, again, collect waifus, which are actually World War II battleships. Uh, is taking on the tradition of, like, Kankol, which was, again, a browser game that did exactly this, and they pulled it on mobile. There's multiple, multiple waifu games uh, being going out and, like, being in, in like on the stores there we just don't talk about it last time we talked about the horse racing waifu game for instance that also making a killing in japan there's a lot of these but they don't translate that well into the west but it seems they're getting you know their little piece of the market slowly and slowly increased as as we see with this one because us is one of the biggest audiences there so it, it's definitely working um both games both azure lane and Nikkei, i would say are kind of like one of the best waifu games there uh the i don't know if the horse racing game the pretty derby uh, if they are that focused on waifus i don't i don't think so probably but but i played azure lane pretty heavily this looks like exactly like an upgraded version of azure lane and they have very very like let's say waifu centric elements in the game i'll, I'll get to them later but um uh, like the typical thing of a waifu game here and pretty much the feature set is pretty common is that they both have scripted single player PV in campaign on repeatable and, and all pretty much like different difficulties that you can stroll through. So like a lot of content that you need to eat. And that's that's like typical for an RPG game. Uh, these, these guys are also in, like amplifying it by their story narrative. And this is this is very, very important. Like usually if you have something like story in raid shadow legends or afk arena it's kind of non-existent it's like nice to have or something here is like a completely different level the game's fully voice over it in both english japan and korean of course anime people will always vote for japan because like having anime with english uh, dub is just sacrilege i'm sorry and then uh you have literally anime sequences as cutscenes like they Actually, it seems like they paid the studio to do an anime for them to do like three to five minute cutscenes. And the story is pretty heavy. Like you start the game and in first uh, five to six minutes, you ended up in a cutscene that you will need to pull the trigger and kill off your tutorial guide directly into the head because she got corrupted by a virus or something and she needs to die at blah 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 it gets pretty heavy but it's great like the production value outstanding there's like a full-fledged anime comes into the game at, at some point and you continue wait wait Remo, does this does it, this game also have like a a anime series to go with it not or is yet, it just in not the game? yet but azure okay. lane did uh their anime series two years after launch and my guess is that this game will also did monster strike also did a lot of successful games just like there's the natural way to branch into like offline advertising and just pretty much do anime series it people will eat it like hotcakes so how, how, it's the same as cyberpunk by the way that was a nice 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 kind of a shot there um yeah uh, where, where was i yeah so we killed the tutorial guide the game goes and continues uh why is making so much money? Because there's character event gacha monetization. And this is the, the secret sauce of nice. all of these games, why it's working so well, because you need to spend a lot of time in order to pull something useful from the gacha. That, that's the main thing. And the character progression is the typical one for a gacha game where you have like levels of characters. Uh, they even have the star system. So star system pretty much determines how much you can limit break your characters, meaning that what's the actual end level that these people can eventually achieve if you have enough duplicates of them, because you can level them for XP and like you have them, that that's great, but you need duplicates of them with the same small chance to get. So, you know, the system is greased really well in a way that you need to pull more and more stuff from the gacha. There's the typical temple that people go here for, which guarantees a little bit of like some kind of guarantee uh, that accumulates. They even have like the, the typical wishing list feature where you can actually wish list stuff on your gacha, which will increase the chance that you get something uh, that you wish listed a little bit, just like, you know, 
so you can keep your list uh and uh, the, the the main thing is that there's multiple pools and this is the secret sauce between the whole system that you have you have like five pools immediately you have like standard pool then you have the social pool for instance with like shitty characters that you get from helping people on well, i have the i have the i have the pool behind me as well but i, I guess there's a different type of pool yeah. <laughs> when you got his sink in his kitchen yeah because that, 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 that's a background that, that pool that pool doesn't make that much money i would say uh well that that pool makes a lot of money that pool yes but that <laughs> pool not <laughs> Anyway, uh, the, the, the key here is that you have characters that come and go with, with these event pools and the only way to get them is pretty much to, to draw them from the pool with chances like 4%, less than 4%, 2%, like very, very small chances. So you need literally hundreds of tries to get these uh, in order to pull. Like it, It's pretty typical within these games to even re-roll them. So you start the game, you play until some kind of a mark, and if you didn't get like a good character from that point for the free currency you were given, you restart. And th this is normal practice within these games. So it's all about the gacha. Gacha pretty much paces everything. Uh, you want these characters because yeah, they not only increase your power, uh, regarding player progression because they're very good and the event ones the ones for instance now they already switch like three i think or three or two characters that like come and go and i cannot get them anymore uh, because they were just in that event gacha uh is that they're waifus and you want to collect them anyway that's that's like one of the biggest power of like a waifu game that if we compare it to something like empires and puzzles which also have like this very very heavy gacha monetization uh, you don't really need that collective aspect there. Like what you need, you, you need like roles being uh, placed on your team. So let's say I need a fire mage, I need a fire tank, I need like this guy from that gacha. Okay, I can wait to get next one. But here you actually want to get the specific waifu because she has the full voiceover. Because of collection? Yeah, yeah. It's like collection. Okay. It's, so it's very, very heavy so on the actual collection. That's the powerful thing about yeah, waifus. It, it, like it's, it's really powerful. And I'll get to it later why you want to have these waifus specifically. Because you can do other things once you have them, which you cannot do within a normal gacha game, especially in the West. Also, even in the East. Like, For instance, Monster Strike is also like very, very, very good gacha game, but they don't have any waifu features. And you cannot do things with the tokens from gacha that you can do here. So that's there. Uh, on top of it, of course, is an Asian game, so it's very, very feature heavy. So it means that it has very deep power progression layer, very, very deep. It means that we have character levels that we need to exp, uh, exp up. We have limit breaks, which means we need duplicates of characters to pretty much unlock their level. We have skill upgrades on each character. We have equipment slots, six equipment slots on each character, and the equipment can be upgraded itself. And then on top of it, uh, of course, we have the skins. And skins in waifu games work much better than skins in normal non-waifu games. Let me tell you just that. So <laughs> that's, Why that's is that? very, very... Why is that? Because you, you want to collect every and each of a skin you have in the game. Uh, like, you want why, to buy new it... clothes for your waifu powerful. man. That, that's, that's very easy. Okay. <laughs> You want to see okay. the different looks, huh? Mm. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and you know, keep right. in mind that here the skins are mostly for you. Usually skins work as a social status for people to show yeah. off. But here you want mm. to have them. Even though yeah, they, it's, your collection. it's like a PvE situation. Yeah, it's your collection. Your collection is very, really the center here. So you want to have that. So, so, so it really sounds like this will be the next billion dollar mobile game. Huh? Mm, could be. Like uh, the start's definitely looking there. If they are able to pull out some very heavy live ops, which they already started, the usual treadmill on these games, my guess is that they will get to these really, really big spikes. Just to give you a context, let's, let's run through some numbers so we know what we're talking about. So if we compare... I hope, it... you, I hope you have decimals. Uh, no, I don't. There's no decimals, Felix. I'm Felix, <laughs> Felix the decimal one. I'm, I'm the one with million, so millions and billions. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so just by comparison, uh, Azure Lane, when it started in like the, the first big man when it launched, it didn't launch globally yet. It launched uh, only in Asia first. It did something like 15, more than 15, 16 mil a month in the first month in the, in the big one. As we talked before, Nikki already did 83 in just the first month. Okay. Compare Japan to Japan. Japan to Japan. 
Uh, yeah. I think that would be something against like, um, what's there? It should be more. It should be more. Yeah, that, that, that's the Japan, actually. Like, Azure Lane Ranch launched uh, first in Japan and like uh, Asia. Okay, but, but... but the chart here says pretty much like it's mostly Japan, like 90% at that point. So... Sure, but then like Goddess of, of uh, well, the, the Nikki game is like Japan, then South Korea, and then US. Uh, so like, how, like, Nikki if is. If you want to compare apples to apples, then. 48% Japan. 48, 40 okay, first month. So, so it's 40, it's 40 okay, mil. Okay, okay. So it's 40, 40, 40 mil, mil out of there's the day. 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I want so, to hear. So it's it's even fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's even bigger in Japan. Yeah, mind blowing. Uh, my guess is that's anticipation because I guess for some of these games the delays actually went pretty well because there's like it was the de- everyone was delayed so there's not that much to play and these guys were pretty much hyping it up really really good and they you know the pre registrations like I know three mils but also the pretty derby. They they yeah, were just yeah, delaying same, everything same and then that, that delay after delay yeah, after yeah, delay and then the rocket and then success. anime series yeah. yeah anime series and everybody was like super eager to play and then now they exploded yeah yeah okay so, so that's there but as I said like Azure Line currently makes in those spikes the usual event driven events or whatever periods they're running there something like uh, eight mil. Uh, and it was launched in 2017, yeah. so it still makes a lot of money. If I counted it right, it did like 560 million altogether for for all of the apps in China, Taiwan, South mm. Korea, and I, I don't know what I'm reading this, I'm sorry. But pretty oh, yeah, much the whole bunch need... did like very, very, very good. And we still don't see the Chinese revenue from Chinese stores, yeah. which I guess That's yeah, the thing. There. That's the thing. Yeah. So, but if you look at the whole pie chart of Azure Lane throughout these like all years from 2017, 59% of revenue is coming from Japan, 16 from China that we see on on these sites, and then third place is US with 11%, 55 million. Mm-hmm. Okay. And afterwards, you get the usual suspects such as Taiwan, and then Germany, and some kind of other countries. But those are like one to two percentages, kind of small. Uh, if you look at Nike. Uh, it's already. I don't think it's Nike. Yeah, Nike. Nike, Nike. is a, okay. You know, let's do that. Nike is a different company. You know, you can buy clothes. Yeah. yeah. So, Jap- and, so and trainers. So <laughs> for 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 the latest one, Japan makes like fifty percent, South Korea twenty percent, and then comes United States at sixteen percent, which I still think is pretty high for like a Western-based audience, uh, followed by Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Thailand. So. Not Germany yet, but US part is still pretty, pretty big. I, I guess it's also because they already have like an English dub in the game. I know I said it's sacrilege, but I guess it works for English audience, uh, at least the one that's just getting to of this course. game. And it's like, man, it's like, it's literally like being in an anime. There's like dialogues and shit after every encounter. There's mm, anime okay. sequences. There's like the gameplay, the map, everything. It's very, very, very good. Like if you're into anime and stuff, this is the game for you, definitely. And I would say maybe yeah, I can see it on your face. You can see it on your face. You enjoy it quite heavily. <laughs> I didn't have that much time because you know, son was born, so course, I had yeah, yeah. <laughs> to balance a little yeah. bit. But yeah, it, it, Re- it, Remo, Remo San. <laughs> yeah, Remo San. <laughs> Remo San was born. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, the thing is that my guess is, and, and we already saw it, we already saw it with Small Giant, like these game concepts are getting into the West. They will get into the West eventually. As usual, all the trends are coming from Asia to the West, somehow adapted and works here well. So my guess is we'll see more and more of these. Uh, as I said before, I stand by my prediction that the Small Giant game won't will not work or will have a much lesser impact if they omit the wife element completely. My guess is that, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward once we see like a true Western waifu game with even the Western art or some kind of a features that will be kind of typical adaptation for Western audience. But this is still... But will, will it be waifu if it's a Western art? We'll see. We'll see. Because you, you, you already yeah. have those like, uh, you know, game of sultans and stuff like that. That kind of oh, looks a little bit King's wife, for M, a King's choice. Wife yeah. wish, let's uh, say. Wife wish. Oh, okay. But yeah, let's see because wife it's wish. it's it's uh, yeah it, it it works a little bit different there. But it's 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 I would say the closest we have in the West regarding this category, and it works also pretty well. So 
let's see. Um, yeah. yeah, so the, these were the numbers. Again, as I said, like more than 84 mil uh, in the first month. That's, that's really outstanding. Uh, continuing on the feature uh, rundown, the core gameplay is the typical, very easy to control, but super deep to main max. I know it looks like easy. There's, of course, like auto combat, semi auto combat, where they will use abilities on auto play and you can still shoot and aim. Uh, Azure Line had the same again, like fully auto combat, but at some point the AI is not good enough to, to carry you over the boss encounters. So you need to take helm and like actually, you know, do your stuff there. I know it looks like very easy, like there's nothing there, like, but actually there's very, very kind of more than meets the eye regarding like what you need to do. Keep in mind that all the waifus have different uh, weapons and they work completely differently. So if you're like attacking something with a shotgun, sniper rifle, rocket launcher, or even an assault gun, the whole thing kind of switches. There's an order that you need to use their abilities within this kind of a combo that they have there. Uh, it's kind of very typical with like Azure Lane. With Azure Lane, they have this like very, very hardcore uh, pretty much setups where you need to count the seconds where aircrafts come from the, uh, the carriers and you need to count it down so you have enough strikes so you don't deplete your seconds on like non-compatible ships and also the ships where you, you know, pull the guns of the battleships. So you need to time it right, which means you need to give them the right fighters for every ship so they can make as much uh, sorties during the level. Okay, Ota. Mr. Otaku, or what, what the fuck was the name? This is like, game design. Nerd. Nerd. I think it was nerd. I think it was nerd. Nerd. Think it was nerd. Mechanics. Right? Nothing else. Vectors and this mechanics. Is, this is fucking, yeah, systems and vectors. <laughs> Something what, interesting. what I'm trying to uh, say is it's still really deep. If you get into it, it's very, very deep. It's actually pretty hard, and, to be honest. So yeah. don't don't disregard it as like, yeah, they just yeah. slapped a bunch of wipe with some random shooter gears or work or gameplay and it works. No, it won't. It's just very, yeah, very that, thought out. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it, it sounds deep, but, uh well, of course I, it I is couldn't deep. get into it. You just this. didn't see it. I That's couldn't it. get yeah, I couldn't get into that level of, of fucking deep yeah game design and then um, they have the full full feature big rundown they have like you know the idle generation feature that you need to come every 12 hours and pick up they have the character time lock for rewards where you pretty much need to send characters on missions that will lock them which means you need to have more of them in order to use them they have the dorm room outpost feature where you have pretty much like a poly pocket uh haven't seen the decorations in goddess nike yet but uh nikkei yet but Azure had that quest system directly pretty much taken from stuff like AFK Arena, the daily, weekly, monthly challenge, everything. A lot of additional modes. Like they have even this rogue simulation that's pretty much really similar to Labyrinth feature for AFK Arena, where you go from battle to battle and you grow stronger and stronger, which you need to like pick three abilities in between when it rings bells, of course. <laughs> people know uh, scale difficulty tower very heavy live ops tied with these event gacha pools and very very heavy economy you have pretty much four inventories with different materials and everything like you know lots of things to spend on that's that's very very easy but let's get to the differentiators within the waifu features because this is this is the real thing no. yes so what azure let's, lane let's has let's quickly please azure lane has yeah, is that you have this kind of a dorm room where you have five battleships that they pretty much take on xp even when you're not there in the game and you need to put fuel there in order for them to consume because they're ships, of course. And they they have this happiness happiness mechanic which increases their stats and everything. And in Azure Lane, actually, if you hit 100 happiness and if you buy a wedding ring in the shop, you can marry a waifu and you can marry as much as you want. Why not? Which unlocks a special wedding skin or stuff around that. <laughs> <laughs> like portraits and stuff. So that's good. But Nike, they don't have this marriage mechanic, but actually they take it to another level where you have like a fully fledged WhatsApp that messages you with all the waifus. You have like separate chats and group chat. Like they actually casually message you with like a group chat discussion. And you can choose within a story segment uh, the thing. Like like you would have like episodes and choices built into the game pretty much. And And Nice. So this is like retargeting pretty much. Uh, uh, we haven't finished yet. Uh, that, that's like casual WhatsApp with waifus. That's one thing. But the other thing, and this is, I haven't seen it yet. 
advice mechanic where you actually go can go and advise the waifus like what they should do and like take life decisions for instance i have a one that's like a hip-hop singer or something like that which she fired her manager and i'm now her manager and like stuff around that and she has troubles wow. within like organizing concerts and stuff so of course if you are you are her manager then of course she has uh, <laughs> troubles with organizing concerts i mean her happiness happiness uh <laughs> is increasing is definitely no not, worries no yeah, i'm but, not sure but but the thing is that Mine is started not. with Tamagotchis and now we're yeah, here. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's oh, full yeah, yeah, Tamagotchi yeah. and and it's monetized. That's the thing. So the happiness, the bond level here increases their stats uh, kind of heavily. That that's that's really good. But the other thing is that in order to increase the bond, you either have to advise them, and you can advise five times a day, and you have the whole inventory of the whole collection to choose from who to advise. The bond level also increase, or let's say unlocks episodes of new story within each of those, so you know more relationship status, more story for you, more focus, more attachment. And then you, if you don't have advice, uh, you know, you depleted all those, what do you do? Of course, you buy gifts, which are consumables, either given throughout of the course. game or sold in the shop. So uh, that's on top of it. And then, of course, skins. Skins uh, still very light, I would say, uh, but these are like one of the main drivers of the live ops here. So they will be added pretty heavily into the game, I guess, later down the line. But just, uh, I think, last week or this week, uh, they added the new pool with uh, this girl that I forgot the name. Uh, but they had like a new special anime sequence, like four minutes one just for her, where she pretty much like picks up the courage and then does this like whatever chain, like chain gun, laser chain gun sequence where she destroys everything and she's super OP uh, in the gameplay. And that's the usual thing. Like okay. the best thing in the event gacha is usually very OP. Everybody wants to have it. So yeah, their, their live ops, is not taking time it's already there it's fully fledged and it's making those big spikes and this game will be driven by those big spikes from event gachas nice. so that's there Man. so i would say this is the, the next level of like a waifu game especially the whatsapp thing really really got me that i, I haven't oh it's amazing like it, it's i, I yeah, think it's, it's from those games uh, in china the love and producer ones and where pretty much like you have like multiple boyfriends and they integrate with WeChat and stuff like that. So I guess they took a hint from there and put it here into the game. <laughs> so it works great. It's like, yeah, it's amazing. And nice. by the way, you can play the game uh, not only on uh, Portrait, you can even switch it to landscape 60 FPS if you want. It is possible. And I'm playing it on emulator like this. Which means you can see a much, Ugh. much bigger playing field than the combat field. Of course. How else? Any questions? Oh, all right. No. Let's just. No. Uh, no. My, no. my happiness. Yeah. My, my happiness mechanic is on the on the top top level. I think. But it works so well, we man. Can, like uh, monetization oh, wise, no, 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 design I, I get wise, it. I get it's, it. it's a marvel of a game. No, it's like, amazing. Great yeah. job, outstanding move, guys. Like you really nailed it. Like I, I was expecting another kind of Azure Lane clone or something that was catching mm. up to it because there were a lot of well, them. This is way better. This, yeah, this, this is, is like better. pushing it to the next level. Let's, nice. uh, let's keep an eye on this and then, uh, yeah, see if our prediction is true. That is the f next billion dollar game then. Yeah, might, might be. All right. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's it for, uh, for today. Thank you very much for uh, listening. I need to say uh, again, thank you very much, guys, because we, we had this uh, Spotify wrapped, uh, which surprised me in a positive way. Uh, so thank you very much for being awesome. We got all the all the like amazing stats from Spotify uh, about you that you are great and you're sharing our podcast. So please keep doing so. Uh, and yeah, until next time. Thank you very much. Bye, Bye everyone. Yeah.